I would fight that. I think that the federal government should not be uh, bypassing local decision making. And our executive council and the governor uh, and our elected representatives represent the people here. Uh, there is a, certainly a need to provide assistance to, um, to women and children and poor people, but we need to partner with organizations that are not offensive to many of our citizens in terms of what they stand for. And so that was, I don't think that was the right move. I would try to fight that move if I could and uh, would do whatever I could. Now, keep in mind that we've allowed, and we need to take responsibility for this as citizens, we've allowed the federal government to really send its tentacles into all aspects of our life. But didn't I think the question? The question was, what, what would be my position about the idea that even though we had rejected the Planned Parenthood monies uh, through the Executive Council, Planned Parenthood was able to bypass the state and direct money directly to the North Country, for example. What was my position on that? And I said, it's the will of the people through their elected representatives, and that's not right. If I'm governor, would I pardon Lord Barrett? Yes, I, I would certainly look at his case. I'm very sympathetic to him. And I think, I think uh, first of all, the legislature wouldn't have to worry about a overriding my veto of Senate Bill 88 because I would not have vetoed that bill. I'd be supporting it. And, you know, the position here is, is, and this is the paradigm, and I think we need to express this to our fellow citizens. This, prior to Senate Bill 88, there was a presumption against the citizens' ability to make a decision about whether to either retreat or to defend themselves. And Senate Bill 88 shifted the presumption in favor of the people. It said to us, those of us who carry or have the, or bear arms or, or, or bats or whatever it is, that we have the right to defend ourselves wherever we are. And we have to get back to this notion that we have put our faith in the people first. Yes, people are going to make mistakes, but we don't over-legislate to try to protect us, ourselves from one another. Heck, we're the state that allows people to ride motorcycles without helmets. A crazy operation. If I were doing it, because I would put a helmet on, and Betty would tell me, to make sure, Betty would make sure I'd have a helmet on. But, that's, but we, make a we allow the people to make a decision for themselves, and that's the way we should be in New Hampshire. That's the live free or die state. Right? right? <laughs> Thank you for asking the question. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you know, I have to, let me just sit, tell you, to give you this perspective of mine. I hope right to work, I hope that veto is not overridden. Because I think that's a cutting wedge issue that works for us as Republicans, by and large, and conservatives. Now, ideally, I would, well, certainly if I were the governor, I would have signed right to work. I believe in freedom of choice. Once again, someone called me yesterday, just as an example, when she said, Please use the story on the, on the stump if you'd like. She applied for a part-time job at a company that she didn't think twice about what the workplace was like, but she applied for the part-time job. She submitted a resume, was interviewed. The people there loved her. So she was signing the application to become an employee, part-time employee. And the, the woman in HR said, oh, you have to become a member of the union, you know. She said, what? I have to become a member of the union? I'm working part-time. And the HR director said, well, of course, you've got to be part of the union. We're a union shop here. And you know what she said? Thank you very much. That's against my conscience to become a member of the union. I want to go somewhere else. That is as poignant a story as ever there would be one. And people have the right to organize, form a union, but they don't have a right to deny you and me the individual decision to become members of the union. And we have to accept the consequences if we're not. If we become a right-to-work state, that will be one more flag in our favor to say New Hampshire is the place for business to locate. So don't go to South Carolina, Boeing. Come up to New Hampshire. We're very capable of putting the airplane products together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. How can profits or they go right back into the business? So it's kind of like taxing innovation or productivity. 
But whatever we can do to lower the business profits tax and to try to realign it so that it, it lowers the burden on businesses is what we should do. But you know, keep in mind, there, we have a, sort of, I call it a matrix of fees and taxes that support state government. Um, and I think the best way to try to do what I'm talking about is to lower spending at the state government level. You know, keep in mind that even though the legislature did yeoman's work in terms of bringing spending down to the level of expected revenue, <coughs> There was very little opportunity for the legislature to reform government. For example, how we do our budgeting. We have a maintenance budget approach, which assumes that what we did last year is what we should do the next two years. No, it's not. We should do zero-based budgeting. We should start from scratch in terms of demanding from commissioners and departments and program areas to justify why they need dollar one again. Just because we did it this way two years ago or 20 years ago doesn't mean we should be doing it that way today. We should be looking at outsourcing and lowering the cost of the delivery of services in New Hampshire. And that's going to result in a lowering of the business profits tax. And also making adjustments to the business enterprise tax, which you know, works in parallel with that business profits tax structure. Now, we, we're, we're kidding ourselves if we think we are a business-friendly state when it comes to taxation and regulation. And regulation is out of control. Uh, let's start by putting a moratorium, flat moratorium on any new regs. Let's look at what regs exist. Some of them are already sunsetted. And if they're sunsetted, then we should take them off the books, force the agencies to come back and come back to us with new regulations that are consistent with the law. The legislature should play a bigger role in the life of legislation, executive branch a smaller role when it comes to regulation. We've allowed the executive branch of government to create a fourth branch, which is the regulatory structure, and we need to change that in New Hampshire as we do at the federal level. Do you think there's a little bit of work we need to do in New Hampshire? There's a lot of work, but we can do it, and we're going to do it. We've got one more question. Okay, one more question. Thanks, Doc. Why do we have multiple business taxes? Why not just simplify the whole structure and have one business tax with a decent exemption? If we can, and that's, the question was, why do we have two different taxes, well, business profits tax and business enterprise tax? Wouldn't it be better to have one tax? The answer is yes. The problem is with the business profits tax and all, a lot of businesses were essentially exempt from that because they were able to distribute their earnings through, by way of salary. And so the business enterprise tax is a way to try to close a loophole. I think we should take a look at the entire business tax structure and see if we can't come up with a brand new way of evaluating what truly is profit, what's a right margin level to assess, and what does that mean to us in terms of revenues that are predictable, reliable, and not onerous so that we're driving businesses away. Uh, so that there's a, there's, there's a lot of work to be done there, too, and we haven't done any significant business tax reform in a long time. Uh, so anybody who has an interest in that, we're going to be doing that, by the way, over the course of the campaign, finding out where people have it, people have an interest in a particular area. And it's amazing to me. It's, not, it's refreshing to me. Just about every person you talk to who comes to any town hall meetings or you meet on the street, they have a pet peeve. They've experienced something. And that means they have some experience and passion. And that's what it takes to fix a problem. Have a little experience. You say, there's the, define the problem. I think I have a solution for that. And I'm willing to put the time and effort in to be part of the solution and not part of the problem. Those people are going to have a place with the Lamontang, oh, let me strike that, with the Ovid administration. Let's read something. God bless you. Thank you very much.